Come on, we're gonna be late for the meeting. I just want to check on Prancer. Stevie said she was acting weird. You should have seen you guys. Where's my camera? Very funny, huh? huh. What brought this on? It's not April 1st, is it? Change of pace. Never hurt anyone. Let's just wait till we get the x-rays back. All bow down to the reigning queen of practical jokes. Come on, your silliness. Max is waiting for us. The Interpony Club party is a fundraiser. Last year, Woodgate Stables put on a great bash, and this year it's Pine Hollow's turn. Now, not only do we have to outdo our rival pony clubs, we also have the task of marking the 100th year anniversary of Pine Hollow. So, basically, this party has to really rock. Eloquently put, Stevie. I'm looking for volunteers. I'll do it. Thank you, Lisa. Who's going to help her? Great. Pick the loser who never gets invited to parties to organise ours. Oh, I'll help you. I'll help you. Fine. Lisa and Veronica will co-host the party, but I expect everyone here to do their bit, OK? Uh, no, I said I'd help Phil. But he doesn't need help, Veronica. Lisa does. I have to work with her? this important and then put Lisa the Lamo in charge. Ah! <sighs> <sighs> How juvenile. She is seriously weird lately. <laughs> I want you to meet the cars at the gates and direct them to the valet parking. Megan, I want you to organise the valets. Why don't people park in the yard like always? What are valets? Am I the only one here who has any class? Uh, reality check, Veronica. There is a budget. Thank you for that input, Lisa. People are going to pay, you know. Uh, Phil. <laughs> I know I can rely on you. Then I should remind you, we're trying to raise money for this event. Chandeliers? I can't believe it. She's practically flying the kissing by helicopter. Really? That's cool. Stevie, this is supposed to be about the centenary celebration of Pine Hollow. Don't you think having a historical theme is way better than Valet parking and chandeliers. Um, is there a third choice? So you're taking Veronica's side? No, you just have to lighten up a bit, that's all. Lighten up? Yeah, it's a party. Stop thinking of it like a school project. It's supposed to be fun. But school projects are fun. Want a drink? Thanks. <laughs> with all these practical jokes. This is a timeless classic. 101 practical jokes to amuse your friends. And I'm only up to number 12. I'm not amused. <laughs> That's OK. I am. <laughs> A little snack in case you get hungry. Stevie. Bow to the queen. You need to get your medication checked. <laughs> oh. 
Yes, I know what you were trying to do, but I'm not sure it's such a good idea to put Veronica in charge. That's why I put Lisa in charge with her. Oh, Max, that's like putting the Roadrunner in charge with Wiley e. Coyote. Well, I thought they might balance each other. Squashed him? <laughs> You'd better watch out. Someday, someone's going to get back at you. <laughs> so, Red, are you going to the party? Sure. Are you uh, going solo? I hadn't really thought about it. Because if you want, we could go together. Um, I don't normally date pandas. Stevie. Lisa! I hear you're suggesting an historical theme for the party. I've got something you might be interested in. Or that one. Or that. Guys, you just gotta hear this. What? Friday night is not only the 100th anniversary of the stables, but the 100th anniversary of the death of Max's great great uncle William. So? It's Friday the 13th. We could have a horror at Pine Hollow night, a freaky costume party. Why? Because it all fits in. William had his head chopped off and died a violent death. Or did he? Did he what? Or did he die? Because the headless horseman still haunts Pine Hollow. Yeah, I've seen the film too. So how come no one's seen this ghost before? I have. I was in the stables late one night. And I caught a glimpse of him just near the doorway. He hovered for a second and then he just disappeared. Max told me later on it was probably the ghost of his great granduncle, William, the headless horseman. Thanks, Deborah. That's a very interesting story. It's perfect. I think it's a great idea. And it'll be exactly a hundred years ago. And we can give out prizes for the best costumes. And decorate the stables with scary stuff like skeletons and ghosts. Look, we're trying to bring a little sophistication to Pine Hollow. Save your kids stuff for Halloween. So what happened exactly? Max's great, great uncle found gold up at Possum Gorge. He was bringing home a little bag of nuggets when two desperados strung a wire across the trail between the trees. Cut his head off! These stables were built on the old Regnery farmland. And this is the exact spot where William Regnery died. Max showed me. And you know what's weird? I always feel a shiver when I walk past this spot, and I never knew why. So, Comanche, you're looking beautiful. Yes, you are. Such a handsome boy. <laughs> Day. Huh? Yeah. Give you a brush. <sighs> Lisa told us all about the fright night thing. It sounds a lot better than any old dinner. Megan, Megan, Max is after an occasion, not some juvenile novelty night. 
Lisa told me to make some decorations. I told you. You're in charge of the mood lighting and candles. But... And I want to see some imagination from you people. Why is it always me who has to come up with the brilliant ideas? But I have to be home for dinner. <sighs> Sam, I'm taking you off parking. You can organise the catering. Why me? Because we need you, Sam. Veronica, I just got a call from Shay Andre. Whoa, are they catering Friday night? No, they are not. Why not? Did they double book? Don't worry, I'll get my mother to call. No, they didn't double book. They called with an estimate for the party. Their food is off the planet. So are their prices. This is a small party with a small budget. I was thinking more along the lines of fruit punch and munchies. Munchies? Shay Andre doesn't do munchies. I know, but you do. How am I supposed to make munchies? That's where Sam comes in. Munchies, now that's catering. Sam and Megan are threatening to go on strike. Why? Because Veronica's carrying on like Lady Muck. Now, why can I picture that so easily? I think she's going to screw everything up. I'm way ahead of you. I've got backup. What was that? What is it? Why are you asking me? Oh, I get it. Someone's trying to get back at me. It's a joke. They're trying to beat the queen, huh? Let's creep up on them. See anything? I didn't believe it, but there it was. The way hey, well, slow down, girls. Now, Carol, what did you see? Well, we didn't actually see it, but we heard it. It was a groaning, sort of gurgling sound. And horses' hoofs. Well, you were in the stables. Yeah, but galloping hoofs. So, Stevie, you're the only one who actually saw anything. Stevie? Mm. Yeah. I think so. You think so? Well, it was dark. But it was like in the story. Oh, no, that's all stuff and nonsense. But is it? Deborah, you researched it. It's true, isn't it? Well, the historical facts are true, yes. But the legend isn't. Ghosts aren't real. Girls, it's late and you're all a bit overexcited about the party tomorrow night. But Stevie, we're not making this up, right? Time for some shut-eye, girls. But... Girls, go and get your things, and I'll drive you home. Come on. Thank you. Something weird is definitely going on. And how come Deborah's suddenly changing her story? Isn't she? I don't know. Hey, Stevie. Wait. If this is another one of your practical jokes, it's not funny. Me? I swear I didn't do anything. This is really creeping me out. What were you thinking, Deborah? I'm so sorry. If I'd known, I never would have said anything. Don't worry. I think we threw them off the scent. Well, I hope so. I can't afford to have this getting around. Who wants to ride at a haunted stable? What if he comes back? What if other people see him? Maybe we should cancel the party. We're not cancelling anything. We have to act like there's nothing wrong. And if worse comes to worse, I'll have to put an end to him. How do you do that? He's already dead. <laughs> Who's there?
couch to the left. Ah, you finally arrived. I said the left. It is the left. My left, Durbrains. It would be nice if you did something. I'm doing the hardest job of all. I'm trying to get some organisation going here. What are you doing? You can't just leave that there. Watch us. You're all useless. You can't even follow instructions. I mean, where are the chandeliers? I couldn't find them in the yellow pages. What are chandeliers? <laughs> peasants! I'm surrounded by peasants! Getting the best out of your work as I see, Veronica. Well, at least I'm doing something. So we've noticed. OK, guys, you've tried sophistication. I say we get back to the basics. I say we get back to Fright Night. Yeah. You'll never yeah, do yes. it in the time. Most of it's done, Veronica. What? As soon as you got the job, I made other arrangements. Just as well, don't you think? They are so... so... what's the word? It begins with a J. Jerks? No, kids. Juvenile. Yeah, that's the one. They're riding high at the moment. They think tonight is their night. But they haven't counted on one thing. I am a D'Angelo. So let's get this straight. Max knows all about the ghost, but he's keeping it a secret. Well, he just doesn't want to panic everyone by telling them the truth. Adults, you can't trust them. The headless rider could be lurking around the corner, ready to pounce. This is major. OK, time out, guys. I've had a good night's sleep. I've thought about it, and I know what's going on. Am I the queen of practical jokes? Yes, I am. And I've got one word to say to you. Veronica and Christy. That's two words. <sighs> Veronica. It all adds up. She's been against us since day one. But how? She goes to the theater. She hangs out with actors. Veronica. She's gonna try again tonight. Only the queen's gonna stop her. Yeah. We meet here after dark. All oh, right. No, Phil, this is girl's business. The truck from the higher place is here. Have you got your costume lined up? Yeah, I'm going to be Freddy Krueger. What about you? I was going to go as Frankenstein, but I tried my costume on this morning and it's too small. Shouldn't monsters come in large? You'd think so, wouldn't you? I know what we can do. Welcome to my nightmare! get away with this? What is that? Come on. so fast. 
What? And how come you got changed so fast? It took me hours to change. Well, if it wasn't you, then... Enough. Is he slash enough for you? A bit. Where's the. the headless horseman? You mean you all. and I? Fred, so, Your Majesty. And with a little help from Maestro, I feel on sound effects. Uh, uh, I, I, I knew it was you all along. Did you? I was sucked in big time. You, you, you and you, go and get changed. We've got a lot of partying to do. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe he was in on it. I thought he was, well, you know, boring. But he's not. He's surprising. I like that. What are you so happy about? Life. Isn't it wonderful? I didn't think these costumes would be so effective. We certainly scared them. Yes, we did. Feel my jacket. It's so soft. Gorgeous. Just because we're learning to ride like rodeo trash doesn't mean we have to dress like it. Stevie and I did this weekend last year. Yeah, it was great. You'll love it. Never can tell. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. My name's John Brightstar. Me and my daddy are gonna teach you all the ways of the Wild West. Does he think he's a real cowboy or something? So you're gonna teach us to ride Western, right? Well, yeah, that was the plan. Oh, no, I need to see Max. Howdy there, John. Where's Bye? Oh, uh, he had a steer roll on him yesterday. It's terrible. Yeah, I know. Uh, he's doing fine, though. Well, I, uh, I guess we'll have to cancel the weekend. Oh, well, no, well, actually, Max, uh, my daddy reckons you could do it. Yeah, yes, please, 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 please. Well, I, uh... Okay. Yes! <laughs> Max, we were going away this weekend. Um, Deb, what could I do? The kids were really looking forward to the Western Clinic. Max Regnery, you are the most unromantic man I have ever met. Hi, I'm Megan. Looks like Megan's rustling your cowboy. I've always wanted to learn Western. We must seem totally pathetic to you. I mean, we don't know anything about riding Western. Oh, that's all right, little lady. It's real easy. Will you show me? Isn't it exactly the same as riding English, except for the tack? Megan, what are you talking about? They're completely different. OK, everyone, go around. Now, this is the Western or roping saddle. It's based on the deep-seated saddle brought to America by the Spanish conquistadors. 
It's designed to support the rider during fast turns and manoeuvres when he... Or she... Yep, or she is cutting cattle or calf roping. Are we going to ride on them? Indeed we are, Megan. John and I will make sure you're comfortable in the saddles and Mrs Red will take you out on the trail. And when you get back, John and I will do our best to show you how to be a genuine cowpook. So saddle up. scared it. Maybe it lives around here. Where? He seems like a nice guy, doesn't he? Hey, John Brightstar, of course. Yeah, he does. Well, he's not. What do you mean? He's faking it. I know guys like that. He wants you to think he's really sweet, and then... And then what? He'll turn on you. You can do so much better, Megan. John, we saw this horse when we were riding today. It was really wild. It was scared and jittery. Do you think it might be a stray? Oh, uh, well, was this up near uh, Eagle Crag? Yeah, just on the other side. Oh, uh, well, there's a story that kind of goes with that horse. Uh, Max? The horse's name is Belle. Belle? Who's Belle? The old folk talk about it. A phantom horse who roams the countryside. Why? Well, the story goes that the horse belonged to a beautiful woman. <laughs> a princess, right. Now, this beautiful woman fell in love with someone across the valley, but they could never be together because their families were feuding. So, they used to meet secretly up on the peaks until one day, a bad snowstorm caught them. The next day, the townsfolk found them huddled in each other's arms. They died from the cold? Now, Belle, half dead from the cold herself, led the search party to them. But it was too late. 
and the families buried the lovers side by side so they could be together forever. And Belle? Well, Belle went wild. No one could get near her. They say that to this day, she wanders the uplands, looking for her one true rider. I just caught a shiver. They say anyone who tries to tame her will be cursed. Only Belle can choose the rider to replace her beloved first owner. herself. Maybe she ran away. No, there was something about her. Did you see her face? It was like she wanted us to follow her. Are you sure you saw a real horse? Hmm? I mean, what if she's the phantom mare in John's story? Hmm? Get her! <laughs> <laughs> okay, girls, get some sleep. I expect you all to be professional cowgirls by the end of the weekend. <laughs> Good night, Mrs. Rigg. Good night. That was a real horse, and I'm going to find her tomorrow and prove it. Steve, you can't. You heard what Max said. Anyone who tries to catch her will be cursed. I hope the phantom horse isn't creeping around here somewhere. Oh, please. There's no such thing. But Max said Max that... was telling a scary campfire story. But Stevie saw the phantom horse. It's a saddle club trick. Stevie trying to be the centre of attention, pathetic as usual. You mean she didn't see anything? Of course not. But she could be up to something, and I'm going to find out what. Where are you going? I told you I'm going to find Belle. What are we supposed to tell Mrs. Reg? Don't worry, I'll be back before breakfast. She won't even know I was gone. Timing. Mrs. Reg just rang the breakfast bell. Did you see the horse? 
I got about this close, and then Veronica scared her off. What was Veronica doing there? Spoiling things. What else is new? What did the horse look like up close? Well, she was kind of dirty and straggly, and all by herself. I'm going back to get her. What? You can't. Remember the story, the horses choose her rider, not the other way around. Lisa, we're talking about a real horse out there. She could be sick. She needs me, and I'm going to help her. Does my hair look OK? Uh-huh. Remember the plan. If Megan tries to sit next to John at breakfast... I accidentally spill orange juice in her lap. Right. What's wrong with you? I knew we shouldn't be sleeping in the hayloft. This place is crawling with fleas. I tried to tell Mrs. Rigg, but she wouldn't listen. You're probably cursed. What? You know the story. You followed Stevie when she went after the phantom horse. I think being lovesick has eaten away your brain. Oh, yeah? Well, how come you're covered in an itchy red rash and I'm fine? <gasps> I told you we shouldn't be sleeping in the hayloft. Look at me, I'm covered in flea bites. Those would have to be pretty big fleas, Veronica. Yeah, so? Now, that is a textbook case of poison ivy, if ever I've seen one. You didn't wander off the trail at all yesterday, did you? Don't be silly. Well, are you going to call an ambulance? I think you'll live. Here. Ew, gross! Now, da, da, da. What is there. that? It's just a little home remedy that I've perfected over the years. Oh, get that grease away from me. The only stuff that goes on this skin is bottled in Europe. Hey, this stuff works. You're welcome, Veronica. Oh, come on, Veronica. Oh. I didn't tell you I was going to show you my best roping trick. What are you doing? John's gonna show us some more of his stuff. I'm trying to call my parents so they can get me out of this nightmare. Something's wrong with this stupid phone. It's probably the... Don't say it! First it was the poison ivy. Then that stupid rope thing. My clothes are filthy and my nails are a mess. And now my cell phone. It's probably... There's no such thing as a curse. The battery. Maybe your cell phone's battery is dead. It's fine. Then it's probably the curse. Oh! How's it going? This place is so relaxing. Isn't that good? Oh, unless you're a journalist, then it's bad. Well, newspapers are about 
things that happen and well, nothing much happens here. What about the phantom horse? <laughs> Did that happen, Max? Really? <laughs> Deborah Hale. Hi. Now I was just working on it. Oh, no, not yet. I've got till the end of next week. Tomorrow night? No, I can't. OK, um, not a problem. Um, yeah, on your desk by five o'clock. Thanks. Bye. Oh, Max, what am I going to do? They've just moved my deadline forward and I don't have a single idea for the story. Ah, something will come up. Out! Tamush! Well, I hope your dad's back on his feet real soon, John. You should come back and learn how to write English with us sometime. That would be so cool. Away from me, it's cursed. <laughs> She's so sweet. Stevie, look at her. <laughs> Sorry, I don't think she really trusts people. How'd you catch her? I didn't really. She sort of came to me after a while. She chose you? You're the one. You can't keep her. Why not? Would you mind giving us a moment? I'd like to talk to Stevie. I named her Belle. You know, after the phantom horse in the story. She's no phantom. And she's not wild. She's obviously been domesticated. Oh. I'd say she either got loose or... or someone abandoned her. Who would do something like that? Look at her. She's so sweet. Stevie, I know you're trying to do what's best, but she's not your horse. So whose is she? Look at her, she's half starved to death. She hasn't been groomed in forever, and her hooves are a mess. Someone just left her out there all alone. We don't know what happened to her or how long she's been out there. I'm going to call my parents. They have to let me keep her. Stevie, this is not like the time you tried to free the school goldfish. This horse is going to need a home, a vet, food. This is a huge commitment. She trusts me, and I'm not going to let her down. Tell your parents that you can work off part of the board. And tell them I can look after Belle when you go on holiday. And we can help you take care of her so you won't have to do everything yourself. Okay. Come on, Stevie. But what if they say no? You won't know till you call. Yes! This is great! I can't believe you're really mine. I hope you had a good time. Oh, I surely did, ma'am. Here's my email address. If you've got time to write to me. Email? I don't have a computer. How cute. Hurry up, John. I guess you better go. You're still stuck for a warm feeling story? No, I'm just pacing for the exercise. Well, you can relax. I think your story just walked into the stable. Oh, don't tease me. How does Pine Hollow Student Saves Abandoned Horse sound? Perfect. Grab your camera. Oh, say hello to the newest member of the Pine Hollow family. Hello. Don't take it personally, Max. She's kind of shy till she gets to know you. Stevie, can I get a picture of you and, um, Belle? <laughs> Well, that looks like front page material to me. Well, I'll be. 
so that's where you got to. Hello world, this is me, I should be. Won't you open up the door and Hello let me world. in?